It is a fact that everyone's favorite scene from the Harry Potter movies takes place in the trophy room. Harry, did you put your name in the cupboard of fire? Oh, but did you know that this small room has a surprisingly big history? Join me in my first castle breakdown as I compare how closely Hogwarts Legacy represents the trophy room in Hogwarts. Accio Attorney, a trustworthy muggle in the wizarding world. We first hear of the trophy room in the Sorcerer's Stone when Draco Malfoy challenges Harry to a midnight duel in the always unlocked trophy room. Now, my first thought when reading this was whether the teachers lock other rooms at night. That seems to be kind of pointless since first years know Alohomora, but I digress. To find the trophy room in the Sorcerer's Stone, Harry, Ron, Hermione, and Neville, who was sleeping outside the common room because he forgot the password, sped up a staircase to the third floor toward the room. However, in Harry's fourth year, when he's using the prefix bathroom on the fifth floor, he sees Peeves on the Marauder's map bouncing around the trophy room on the floor above. So, according to the books, this means that between Harry's first and fourth year, the trophy room moved from the third floor to the sixth floor. Perhaps even more confusing, in the Goblet of Fire movie, the trophy room is located off of the Great Hall and down some steps below the castle. In the books, this antechamber off the Great Hall is actually a smaller room lined with paintings of witches and wizards. Fun fact, this room is where Violet, the fat lady's best friend, had her portrait, so she was able to gossip with the fat lady and tell her that Harry was actually a fourth champion. We see this antechamber in Hogwarts Legacy, but it's much smaller than what I envisioned when reading the Goblet of Fire as a waiting room for the three champions. When we search for the trophy room in Hogwarts Legacy, it's located right off of the moving marble staircase on the sixth floor. So that means that chronologically, the trophy room goes from the sixth floor in 1890 to the third floor in 1991, and back to the sixth floor in 1994, according to the books. Now, according to the movies, it goes from the sixth floor in 1890 to the third floor in 1991 to the basement below the Great Hall in 1994. So why the discrepancy? First, I think the reason the trophy room moves to the third floor in the book version of the Sorcerer's Stone is because Dumbledore wanted to repurpose the trophy room to house the Mirror of Erised. Now before we go any further, some have guessed that the Mirror of Erised was hidden in the Room of Requirement, but, Your Honor, I object. In order to open the Room of Requirement, you need to walk past a blank wall opposite an enormous tapestry of Barnabas the Barmy three times, concentrating hard on what you need. In the Sorcerer's Stone, it says that Harry backed away and squeezed through a door to his left that stood ajar. To me, this would not be satisfactory to open the Room of Requirement, especially considering how finicky it was in not opening for Harry when he tried to follow Malfoy into the room in the Half-Blood Prince. For more on that, read the Half-Blood Prince. Now, I think this room, which was originally located high up in the castle, just like Dumbledore's office, was a convenient location for Dumbledore to keep an eye on the Mirror of Erised before he put it through the trap door. Then, by the time Harry's fourth year rolled around, he moved it back to the sixth floor like it had been since at least the 1890s. I have a different theory for what we see in the movies. In the Sorcerer's Stone, we see Hermione show Harry a trophy with his dad's name on it, but that's not a proper trophy room. It's just a display along some corridor. We don't get a good look at the trophy room until the four champions are sent there to wait after having their names drawn from the Goblet of Fire. I think having the trophy room as the waiting room for the champions is Dumbledore's way of humbly bragging to Karkarov and Madame Maxine and their students. Being in a room showcasing Hogwarts' many accolades may have given the Hogwarts champion a slight psychological edge. Remember, at this time, there was only supposed to be one Hogwarts champion. Having him or her surrounded by the greatness of Hogwarts could have simultaneously lifted the Hogwarts champion's spirits, while having a demoralizing effect on the other two. And I absolutely believe that Dumbledore would not be above doing this. He constantly tips the scales in favor of Harry. And from Pottermore, we learn that Beau Batons has 62 Triwizard Tournament wins to Hogwarts' 63. Dumbledore surely wants to win the Triwizard Tournament and would want to impress Madame Maxime in the process. Oh, by the way, for those who can do math dating back to the tournament's inception, Durmstrang has never won. But even though Hogwarts doesn't have a rivalry with Durmstrang, that's where Grindelwald went and Dumbledore had a rivalry with him. 
Plus, Dumbledore had to imagine Crumb would be the Durmstrang champion, and he wouldn't want the Hogwarts champion starstruck by Crumb. Placing Crumb in a room full of trophies after the Quidditch World Cup narrowly evaded his capture could have been a subtle way to even the playing field. Now to J.K. Rowling's actual description of the room found in Chapter 9 of the Sorcerer's Stone. The crystal trophy cases glimmered where the moonlight caught them. Cups, shields, plates, and statues winked silver and gold in the darkness. There was also a long gallery full of suits of armor. At the end of the gallery was a doorpost leading into a corridor where Harry, Ron, Hermione, and Neville escaped from Filch. This corridor led to another corridor and a secret passage behind a tapestry that led to their charms classroom miles away from the trophy room. I think this game does a good job of showing off all the trophies. However, I pictured the room as having different galleries of suits of armor rather than a small circular room surrounded by the suits of armor on the outside. Also, Filch told Mrs. Norris to look for students who might be hiding in a corner, and I don't see any corners in this room. Nor is there a door that would always be unlocked. You just end up in this room when you keep climbing upstairs. All in all though, I think it's nice to explore different rooms in the castle that you only briefly hear described. And it's a nice touch seeing the Goblet of Fire casket. Does this mean that Hogwarts is the most recent winner of the Triwizard Tournament in 1890? Or is Hogwarts merely the last or the next host school? At any rate, I thoroughly enjoyed breaking down this often forgotten room and look forward to bringing you my next castle breakdown. Let me know in the comments what room you would like me to see evaluate next, and if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to show your support.